Well, it's the 17th of, 17th of October. Uh, let's see. Okay. Had a message pop up. Um, let's do a roll call first. Um, and before you do roll call, this is Holly. Jay reached out to me. He thought it was going to be where he would just be available by phone. Yeah. So I did send him the agenda and said it was by Zoom and that he could still dial in. But I don't know if he got that because um, he did send his phone number. Let me see. I, I, I think I've got him in my speed dial, Holly. I'll give him a ring right now and see if Okay. I... Yeah, I just don't want him to be thinking we're going to call him and... Yeah. Does my name show on your screens? Yes. Yes. Okay. I don't know what it is. I, I, I did it three times and the, the video part just wasn't, if there's something I can do now, I'll try, but I have no clue. Hi there, Peter. Hey, Jay. Um, Hi, how, how are you doing? Good. Uh, we're having the meeting and you can uh, uh, Zoom in, uh, go into Zoom and be on the meeting too, if you like. Oh, is this on Zoom? Yep. Look at the okay. look at the agenda that Holly said on the fourteenth. I, I sent it to him today. Yeah. Peter, I sent it to him today. Holly sent you a copy of it today, so it should be in your email, and then just open that one up and just click on the thing to go into the Zoom meeting. Okay. Good. All right. Well, then I'll hang up here on the phone. Okay. If, you don't hear, if I don't log in, then uh, just phone me back because I've done a whole bunch of these. Actually, I've done a whole bunch of these by phone, audio only. Uh, do you have any pictures or illustrations or maps that you're going to show? Uh, not me. I don't think anybody does. I don't think so. Well, I'll, I'll just stay on the phone line then. <laughs> All right. I'll, I'll, I'll set you up with my... I just... Put my phone next to the speaker here, and hi, Holly. And I mean, uh, oh, Holly just joined us. Okay, so I'll just put your phone next to the speaker and uh, see if you can. I think you can hear us. Okay, let's give it a try anyway. Okay, sure. Thank you. Yep. Well, I haven't quite tried this before, but we'll see what happens. Okay, let's try a. Uh, Roll call. I'm here, Pete Thomas. Uh, Carolyn? Yes. Jay Stryker? Yes. Jay, can you hear us? Not hearing anything back. Are you on speakerphone? Can you hear me? <laughs> All right, uh, Holly. Yeah, yes, here. here. Thank you. Kelly. Yeah, here. Diane Martin. Yeah, you're here. Okay. Alex is here. I see Stan on the phone. Am I correct? <laughs> As a guest, Stan. Are you going to uh, sit in for the FOD today? Is that, uh... Yes, I am. Thank you. Okay. Uh, first question then is, are there any um, items that anyone would like to add to the agenda for today? Okay, I would like to add one just so we got an update, I think, from Carolyn in terms of the uh, proposed additional funding. We'll just cover that oh. very just oh. briefly. We'll do it on a new business. All right. Um, other than that, I don't see anything that I need to add. I will 
I want to talk about the cake briefly just to give you an update, but I can do that under the historic stuff. So, all right, let's proceed. First item on the agenda, approval of the minutes of September 26. I will make that motion, Carolyn. Holly? Um, I have, I, I'll second it, but um, I have some comments. Okay. Which I don't know if it'll blow it up or not. Um, so I sent you the parade update and you kind of rearranged it. Um, so I wasn't sure why. Um, I know we did a few discussion points, um, but in any case, um, one big thing that was not correct on the parade um, was the additional funding was not requested for the parade. It was the parade committee's consensus to recommend additional funding for the whole year of celebration. Okay, can you tell me where in the... I don't have them in front of me. Um, okay, I'm trying to, I, I think I took a lot of that out of what you had sent out, but... Yeah, there's no way I said that it was um, a parade need. Um, let me see if I can find your on. I, I think what we were discussing, Holly, not that your budget was bigger, uh, but your the need or the, at least that was my impression and that was the argument I used to the finance committee for additional funding was that you needed, you know, had to have the ability to write checks to get a commitment for people to, you know, bands and whatever to show up. So it was a timing issue. Okay, so um, what I had sent over, um, okay, on the, on the minutes you wrote, the working group recommend an additional 25K at town meetings specifically for the parade. I got it. Okay. I mean, and that that is not not what we discussed and or asked for. Okay. So what do you want me to do? Just take out the line? Well, um, the working group recommended Sorry. we were supposed to recommend for Carolyn uh, what she would go back to the town for. And when the parade work group met, um, we felt that twenty five thousand was the additional um recommendation by ours but again that was for the whole annual celebration not for the parade well how about if i do this um let's see working group recommended asking for an additional twenty five thousand a town meeting needed over and above the parade well no we just recommended the additional funding at the town meeting Okay, just period for for the so overall working. 350 celebration. Okay. Um, I would prefer if you swap the two areas and put the up because you're saying, um, you know, here's the update, and I guess the call out items like the first item is post parade. That really isn't parade. So that was sort of an after. Um, so if you flip those two sections, it would be better um, because then it would sort of flow because we gave an update on all the other stuff below. And then we discussed at the meeting, the post parade, which again is beyond the parade group and the recommendation was again to bring back to this committee uh, because we were told to ask about it and the table again was just a, a mention and Carolyn offered um, to get some help for the table uh, but most of this isn't parade it's other than parade Well, I started on these four items. There's four items in that first block, and one and four are both post parade, and I can combine those. Okay. So, 
Yeah, and it doesn't matter to me how you combine any of it. I just wanted to clarify that budget wasn't for the parade. Wait, because, why? Because we have a budget. Wait, okay. That, that budget refers to things like the anniversary cake, um, expenses, incidental things we'll need, advertising, um, and the post parade activities, which again are other than parade, is where that dollar figure was generated. Right. Okay, I think I can. Uh... I can doctor that just fine. Okay, so the other area that I think I I have a problem with um, because I think it's sort of we're being driven by friends of Deerfield is the additional funding needs. I don't feel is a reaction to friends of Deerfield message to us. And on your first page, the third bullet on old business, you're basically implying that the additional fund request is based on Friends of Deerfield not being able to help more. And we we never knew that at any point. So I think our additional need is based on the fact that the 40,000 wasn't gonna cut it for the full year. And, and we had plenty of reasons why. And then what you wrote in that section is redundant with the FOD update, which is further on. I guess you got me confused this one. Well, and under the <laughs> business, you, you did a whole big write-up of Friends of Deerfield and under new business, you did an update from Friends of Deerfield um, and you pretty much covered almost all the same things there. I can find the new business update. Where's the other discussion? Under the additional funding in the old business on the first page. If you want to, I mean, we could talk off, offline and maybe resubmit these next month. I, I don't want to tie up this meeting. I, I guess I, I'm not seeing where you're talking about, Holly. I'm just seeing one thing with the Friends of the Airfield. Under 350th additional funding needs on the first page under old business, you talked about the Friends of Deerfield transmittal. Okay. And that's really the Friends of Deerfield update to us that really isn't driving our additional funding need. And you're pretty much implying that our additional funds are only needed because of what they wrote to us. Well, alternatively, if they can raise the, the money that we're looking for town meeting, there's no need to request an update. I mean, th that is the big mystery, at least uh, as of this meeting. Are, are we going to be, is F Friends of DFU going to be able to provide the difference? Okay, we're talking about the minutes from our last meeting. Yeah. Um, why don't we uh, have finished this meeting and go back to it? Because I think there'll be some clarification of that in our discussion. Okay, but, but the clarification, Carolyn, doesn't matter. This is what we talked about last month or, or several weeks ago. So the clarification that may come later today has nothing to do with what we did at our last meeting. We're supposed to summarize what we talked about then. Right. 
So and, we talked about that and the difficulty they were having with Deerfield and but, they're gonna have a problem raising the money. Right, but you're indicating our, that this whole bullet, additional funding needs was what Carolyn was gonna bring back to the, the town to request. And that additional funding need wasn't driven, at least from my perspective, off of the Friends of Deerfield telling us what they were doing, because we didn't even know that coming into it, and we were already recommending. Right. What it was was the timing, because the fundraiser, the gala or Jubilee, was supposed to be a fundraiser, but because of non cooperation, from or you know lack of participation from Deerfield Academy, it's more of a break even event. They have to rent dishes, linens, even snows. They got to shovel snow. I mean, it's pretty ridiculous. So our the the fundraiser to begin with, the first one that was supposed to generate you know cash was more going to be. It's still going to generate cash, but it's just probably not going to be as much. So we were worried. At least this is my impression. This is what I went to the finance committee for and got their approval of thirty thousand, or their recommendation to town meeting to vote for thirty thousand dollars more, was because um, we needed to have this money available prior to our town meeting in April because April's vote does not allow us to have the use of the money till July first. So this was to have the money in the bank in case we needed a commitment. You need to write a check for the mummers for $8,500 or whatever, whatever you decide on your expenses. We would have the money in the guaranteed money in the bank so that you could write checks, you know, starting next month. But don't we have 30,000 available for the parade? Yes, but you didn't, you felt you didn't, that that was potentially not enough. And it's certainly- No, no. I, I mean, Kelly, did we say that? Because I thought we were okay with the parade budget. It was for the post parade. It was just post parade. Can we just well, say? other expenses that were going to occur before July first? Okay. And and so no one doubted that the Deerfield the friends of Deerfield are going to raise money. I mean, based on our conversations with Conway, Sunderland, Hatfield, everybody raised plenty of money. So this is just so that we have a safety net in the bank to be able to write money right now. So, I, I mean, it's pretty simple. And it's nobody's attributing to nobody. It's just, you know, the friends of the field don't have, they're going to keep fundraising right through the end of the year. They will be selling Christmas ornaments for 2020 Christmas. Okay, okay. I want to just get back to the minutes. Okay. Not what they're going to do. Okay. In terms of the minutes, Holly, I did believe that we were asking for additional funds based on the fact that Friends of Deerfield was not going to raise sufficient funds to cover the cost. I believe that's what I believed. Okay. And that's what I put in the minutes. And okay. I think it was all based to give a comfort zone to ask for yeah. the money with the idea that anything not used was going to be given back. I think that the 350 additional funding. Um, that was, it's very explanatory, maybe more, but it basically covered everything we talked about. Maybe the only thing I think you could do, change would be the, um, the second uh, heading down parade group, working group, change that part specifically for celebration and take out the word parade. Uh, but other than that, we did discuss having that safety net just to give you a comfort zone or give anybody enough money to feel comfortable to approach anybody so I, I don't I think maybe that would be okay to leave it as it is but change the word from parade to celebration uh which is the um halfway down the page or like 55 percent down the page working group re recommend yeah, I, I mean, I've, I've, I've got that, that one. I think yeah, that would be the is, only one I I I did that already. It's, yeah. it's always gone back to page one. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I don't want to. I don't want to beat this. I I have a difference of opinion. I don't want to beat it. So we can move forward. Should we uh, let friends of Deerfield speak because we're already a half hour into the meeting. Yeah. 
Well, the, what it says is to cover the cost of the Jubilee fireworks and other events as once anticipated. That's the non-parade stuff. And then FOD recommended that we seek additional funding. That was in their letter to us. We recommend you seek additional funding from the town meeting. So that was their recommendation, Holly. I understand that, but can we can we just table this and yep. just, right. just move cool. on with friends of Deerfield? All right, Let's table it. Uh, next item on the agenda: pictorial postmark winners. Peter, can we just let friends of Deerfield sister here? We're already having a oh, No, that's quite all right because I'm going to stay because there's other issues like under, um, what's it called? Is it on the, um, the logo? I wish to discuss that with you and I wish to discuss the fireworks when Carolyn speaks. Okay. So continue with your meeting, Peter, as you normally do. And I will just chime in on these different issues that I need to address after discussing things with my committee. Good, thanks, Ken. Uh, thanks. Okay. Yep. Thank you, Kelly. Um, thanks. thanks, Dan. So uh, the uh, pictorial postmark winners? Yeah, so uh, the entries were for South Deerfield was the two with the, the one with the two deer which was uh, created by Ainsley Sothergill. <clears throat> and then the, um, the winner for the Deerfield postmark was the one that said entering Deerfield, which was created by Brooke Charest. Oh, nice. <laughs> They're cute. They were cute. I thought they were great. Yeah. <clears throat> Kelly, can you spell the names for me, the, the two kids? Uh, let me let me get Ainsley's to make sure I spell it right. Hold on. Um, can I ask a question about these? Uh, the postmarks are they going to be attached to? Um, are they going to be something you go to the post office and get stamped? Will somebody be selling perhaps postcards of South Deerfield that have the stamp on them already? What are the intentions of these? Um, I think we talked about cover sheets and stuff at one point and sort of it went by the way. Um, the, um, the two postal marks will be worked up and then will be used by the post office to cancel okay. uh, mail. But an idea, friends of Deerfield, um, get some pictures of Deerfield and sell postcards, if that's something that seems feasible. I'm not sure. That way, people can have the postmark already on the back side of a, of a picture of Deerfield, ready available. If somebody doesn't want to go to the post office, I'm not sure if what if that's a good idea or not. But it's a possible option, as opposed to going to the post office and getting a stamp. Yeah, there's also been some commemorative cover sheets that you know really have in, all, quite embossed envelopes and stuff like that. And, I think we talked okay. about that initially and, and decided not to. All righty. Um, All right, so this is the, I probably can't see it. South Deerfield was the deer. Oh, that's okay. terrible. Yep. Uh, it's because I got a blurred background. Um, <laughs> and you spell it, it's A-I-N-S-L-E-Y. S or L? S-L-E-Y? L, it's A I N S yeah. as in Sam, L E Y, Ainsley. Okay. okay. And the last name is South, the word South, E R. So it's Southergill. S U T H E R G I L L. Correct. Yep. She is age 10. 
Okay. And then the winner of the uh, Deerfield would be the entering Deerfield, the sign. And that is Brooke, B-R-O-O-K-E, Charest. And this was all done voting. Nobody knew who the entries were. And Brooke's age? She is uh, 11. Great. Uh, what is Brooke? What was the last name? It's my last name. <laughs> oh, <laughs> <Good contract. laughs> okay. Age 11. Okay. I think that's wonderful, Kelly. Thank you for following up on that. That was really nice. Um, I was also talking to Marie, and she, I guess, she and you were talking about a public announcement of this and a little bit of a celebration. Yeah, I wasn't sure. Is there a lot of this was discussed prior to my starting on the committee? Is there like but budget or a plan for how this is to be announced? Because Marie said she had a lot of ideas, but I just wanted to come here first to find out what had been talked about prior. Well, I thought we were going to try to get some little t-shirt or thing. Something. A frame, like Peter was going to take a picture and we were going to frame right. it. I did know that. I wasn't sure right. beyond we, that. And then some little either t-shirt or some small thing that, you know, the, the child would have as a, you know, because they were the winners. But then also if you have, we have keychains or something that if the other people that entered, the other kids that entered should have you know, thank you for entering kind of thing. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I'm not sure what Friends of Deerfield and maybe um, um, Stan can figure it out, but if, if, if we have some little stuff, I think that's 100% legitimate um, to, to award these kids for participating. Yeah, Holly. Um, I think that we need to follow through the post office process though to get this all officially done. So that way, whatever we wanna do and how we wanna honor the two winners, um, I, I think it would be great if it was already available so that you know we could show it legitimately through the post office rather than just the depiction of what they did. I agree, because I think you have to go, you have to submit it now. And right. Right. And so we want to make sure everything. And is... I think there was, wasn't there like about a two month process to get this put through? Yes. Yeah. But we, oh, we want to tell the little kids that were really yeah. helpful. And that they might have, if they have any adjustments because the post office wants them to make an adjustment, we can make sure that that gets sorted out in the process. So maybe we could look for one of our events where we could honor them, you know, like the lighting of the cake or something like that, where we could actually announce them. And, you know, it, it, I think doing it where other people could, you know, be part of the celebration of them being the winners would be nice. Oh, Holly, I agree. I think it would be super nice. I just, uh, we on the flyer, we did say that we would notify them this week. So, I mean, we could just keep it simple and say there'll be more to come or something. One of the things that Marie and I were, <clears throat> sorry, we're talking about would be to have a little ceremony at school and you could get all the kids. That's when you could, I could do the, the photographs of all the kids with the winners holding their thing. So we wait on, as Holly suggested, you know, get the official postmark. Uh, and Chris Larrabee, the reporter said he'd be more than happy to come in and do that little event for us and put an article in the newspaper. Oh, that's cute. That, that's great. So we'll- Carolyn, uh, Carolyn, do you remember how long it takes to get the official paperwork through the post office? I think it was like six to seven or eight weeks, something like that. Some, that's, what, that that's what I'm kind of remembering, yeah. Because yeah. yeah. remember this, we set our timeline up so that we had plenty of time right. uh, between now and the end of the year so we because we wanted this sorted out at the beginning of the year so i'm happy to start that process but i don't know do i go to the post office website what do i do i'll i'll, I'll go back and find my notes because okay. i know we got um a handout from them um at okay. some point i'm just digging through my paperwork here um 
the, the person that was the most helpful was Robin, um, the post. Uh, in, in Old Deerfield, right? Old Deerfield, right. Yeah. Okay. She gave she gave us the notes, you know, the printout. Okay. Holly, um, yeah, you can just let me know. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll send you that fact sheet of... Um, of how, how it has to be. But Robin was the one initially who helped us the most. Okay. And then I'll, I'll notify the winners. Okay. Okay. That's great. I think that was a nice little venture. A little too bad that we didn't get more applicants, but I think we got two good ones and That'll yeah. be on the postage. That's why I feel like we should be able to do some little trinket to, to all the participants, plus something a little bit bigger for the winner. Hey, I mean, all, we're, trying to make, we're trying to make memories. Yeah. I want these kids to remember that they participated in the 350th. Do we have t shirts small enough for kids? I think so. Oh, don't we stand? We do, but they don't. They're just re we don't have any right now. No, we'll be doing that again soon, selling them. Okay. Online. Well, we could probably, you know, get one of those or whatever. I don't. I don't know. I mean, you know, the the big thing about it is the the they get. You know, their work is going to be on every letter that goes out of here. Um, you know, on those, on those days. So that was the, that was, the, I think that's what we were talking about is the boost. But yeah. some public notoriety, I think, is, they'll remember that. Particularly yeah. if they have a picture that they can look back on, but we can decide that then. Yeah. All right. Well, let's move on. Parade working group update. Just just a couple of things. Um, we are scrapping um, sending out a postcard because the time is getting away from us and we had some printer issues dealing with the printer. Um, they had a backlog. They weren't getting back to us timely. So because we've lost um, precious time, we're just going to go ahead and send out the invitations. And I think probably within two weeks, those will be going out to the various towns and businesses and the people who we have on the list. Um, the second well, thing I'm is- Sorry, just, I, I'm not quite sure that, what were the, what's the difference between the postcard and the invitation, is that- We were doing a save the date postcard, oh, but okay. it was just simply advertising the event and saving the date, not with a whole lot of details, except for directing people to the various web pages, okay. and because of the timing and the fact that we were going to be probably within a week or two after it sending it, getting out an invite letter, we just decided not to have the expense. Okay, I just, because it was going to be between the wait. printer and postage, over a hundred dollars. And those 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 will go out to businesses and to whomever. Um, to towns surrounding us and businesses and farms and uh, churches, um, just the community. Oh. And then the other, only other bullet I wanted to mention is Sue Antonellis from Deerfield Rec joined us at our last parade meeting. And um, she was really great. She was very participatory. She sat through our whole meeting in addition to um, giving some feedback on post parade. And what we're trying to do is really focus on the parade with the parade working group, but this is sort of spilled over to post parade. And we're hoping, um, you know, somebody will pick up the reins a bit more on this, but as far as the music goes, because Sue has such a history of hiring in music, um, she is willing to help with the hiring of the music and the sound stage for the musicians to have, um, but she does need a budget 
to do that. And so we talked at that meeting and she implied um, that she wanted to look at a couple of things. She wanted to do an activity for kids. And she said she's done something like this in the past with um, some fun stuff, a bounce house and some kid activities where they hire in a company to set that up and have it available. And two, um, for the music, uh, she gave us a rough budget of um, five to 6,000 for having a handful of bands between the hours of four and nine post parade up to fireworks. And for kids activities, she said about 2,000. So um, the, in the eight, 8,000 preferred 10 was where she was setting budget, which means this additional money that we're looking to um, get from the town and or Friends of Deerfield, how things flush out. Um, with If we're gonna go ahead with this post parade and ask her to take this task on, we have to decide whether or not um, that's something that we can okay and give her permission to start setting up. And if we wanna postpone that part of it to new business, because we do a post parade, I believe under new business, yes, the post parade budget. So that's that's it for parade update for the moment. Okay. Sounds like a positive movement. Uh, history working group. Um, this is this will be short. We're actually scheduling interviews. Uh, we've got a long uh, list of potentials that we're working on and a, and a couple that are all, almost ready to happen. Uh, first one's um, scheduled for next Wednesday. And I have a meeting Wednesday to set up another one. So things are moving along. We had a bit of a setback on a cake and Carolyn, I'm, I'm not sure if you've had any luck, but basically when we went out to the fire station to measure out the uh, area for the to install the cake. Uh, it turns out that that's in state highway property and we can't put it there. So um, I, I, did, to, I hmm? did call Elena, um, who is Joe Cumberford's, um, you know, aide, and she's going to look into it and try to sort out because, you know, it's a temporary and it's public good. So um, for DOT to say you can't use this 65 foot layout at all is really ridiculous. So, um, so when, when, when did we find out about that? And who told us that? Uh, we, we got, I, I, there's another fellow in town named Fred Vecta. Yeah. He and I are working together with a cake. So we called DOT, or Fred called DOT, and he started at the local level, then went to the county level, then took it to Boston, and everybody pushed it upstairs, and we got a letter back that said no. So why did we even go to DOT? Because it's in there right away. Part of it will be, yeah. Their, their land is in, the land that's in front of the, police, of the fire station. But I thought we were setting it back. We can't set it back far enough. We measured that out and we can't set it back far enough. Basically the parking lot and about 10 feet towards the road is town land and everything else is state land. So the cake is gonna be roughly half in the DOT layout. And so, um, you know, there's not much we can do at the moment, but, I have um, Peter did and, and Fred both went out and look, you know, cause we were trying to think of another spot. So they, they laid out where the cake would be in front of the senior center. So we have that space alternatively if we can't get this resolved, but I have, I have a faith that it's gonna get resolved. We're just gonna be buggy about it. You gotta ask and you gotta, you know, Say, what the heck? And, well, and I mean, Deerfield, South Deerfield's sign is permanently there on DOT land. So having a cake partway near it is, is ridiculous. Why not? 
So. Well, the, both Fred and I thought it was better since we realized that it was on state land. We better find out beforehand before we get the cake set up rather than after and get told to move it. Because that's going to be one heck of a job moving the cake to be in with. But anyway, so alternatively, we did measure out there is a, a space at the corner of Conway and Main Street that will house that cake. Um, it's not out where everybody's going to see it on the highway, but at least it's in the village and it's someplace that uh, we can set up. Electricity is there next, uh, we can run it off the senior center. And uh, there's enough space. We have additional space, actually. Um, so we could put it there. Anyway, that's sort of the alternative at this point. So the select, the select board is fine with an alternative location. So uh, but, if you want to, if you want to see where the cake's going to be or what space it'll take, um, I flagged it out. Just go to that corner, and you'll see little green flags in a circle. That's the size of the cake. How far off of the the road is it? Off Main Street. South uh, North Main. Yeah. North Main and Conway. It's right on the corner. That little, you know, where right, we set uh, up the Memorial Park. Over to the old senior center, right across from the bank. Right. I know what you're talking, but how set back from the road is it on both roads? Uh, it's set back eight feet off the sidewalk on Conway Street and about 20 feet off the sidewalk on North Main. Okay, so North Main isn't an issue, but I'm thinking about plowing. It shouldn't affect it. It's the sidewalk's there. It's not going to... We That's one of the things we looked at. And it yeah, be okay. Okay, well, un unfortunately, that kickoff weekend kind of, that changes because we were going to do something on the South Deerfield Common, Old Deerfield Common, and where the cake was going to be. So it's kind of, I think it's redundant to do something on the South Deerfield Common if we're going to have the cake there. Well, still working on it. Well, let's, before, let's hold off. before, hold off a little bit. Okay. We'll okay. Really turned down by DOT. I okay. Mean, I, I look at That's this. It's just a backup plan. Annoying. Yeah, this is annoying, but I'm not really willing to give up yet. <clears throat> Because I really like the idea of being by the South Deerfield Fire Department, uh, District Fire, yeah. there because it it's so visible. So we're going to go ahead and get the decals and stuff put on that cake. Um, I'm waiting for a budget to come back uh, from Tim down at uh, Pacific Printing, and um, Galinsky has offered to let us use his big flatbed truck to move Good. the sections of cakes Good. from Waitley down to. Oh, that's here. really nice. That's really, really nice. Yep. Jay, hello. Okay, that's what I had to report out on the cake and for the working group. Um, guess you're up, Sam. Oh, okay. First, I'm going to talk about our, our gala. Um, ticket sales are going quite well. We have a total of 71 tickets out. Two of the members from this committee have purchased, and one of them, one is in the mail, and she should be getting it as soon as possible, whatever the mail is. And so our total on this ticket sale so far is $4,580. But remember, some of that is um, free tickets that we had to give to some of our, our larger sponsors. Um, for our sponsors, our grand total that we have taken in so far is $24,125. Um, and we are, we are two months in our, our campaign and we are continuing campaigning. We are now going 
to be going out to other than local businesses, we're, we're going out to oh, larger corporations, such as some in California, like Pelican, and, and some of the, like, maybe like the Arthur Davis uh, Foundation and places like that. So we are continuing on with our campaigning. So we're hoping to raise more money, you know, hopefully as soon as soon. Um, Mr. Harris said he will have more time to spend on this campaign, you know, fund um, where he has a lot of contact that he's dealt with in the past and he will continue working on that. Um, our, we have picked our MC. Um, she is a local woman, a graduate from Frontier Regional, Mount Holyoke College, and got her doctorates of journal law in at Fordham College. She is a it she she is oh, I'm sorry she's a jury she has a jury's doctorate's degree. Um, she has worked on many cases, big cases um, on television, such as the Casey Anthony, uh, Jody Aris, Drew Peterson, um, Phil Sacrum, O.J. Simpson, and she has worked on the Mark Jamar. We have asked her not to mention, if she discusses any of her cases, not to mention our local Mark Jamar. Um, and, um, and she is honored to be our, guest, our MC for the evening that, that night. Um, and our tables, we have many people have, we have donations of our black linen. Um, we have donations from, um, for black skirts and silver um, tablecloths all donated. So we won't have to be renting that. We are very fortunate to have Bittersweet doing our cupcakes and our cake. Cake. And we have John LaSalle has offered to, um, well, we're, we're paying John to do our centerpieces, which we're trying to do as much local as possible. And we have Richard's um, candy store shop. Yeah. Candy, candy kitchen, excuse me, candy kitchen, which is donating chocolates for every table. We are thinking about giving a, Friends of Deerfield is thinking about giving a little token of some kind of appreciation to everybody who comes on each table as you enter. Yeah, I mean, as you sit down. Um, did, I did I mention that we have so far seven tables total sold. Um, and, I discussed the vendors, um, fireworks. I'll wait till Carolyn speaks first, but then I will get into the fireworks later. Um, and the other thing, I listened to the last meeting on, on, on the computer today, and the word, the word, uh, the word came up. Um, Dear Friends of Deerfield has never been asked to do anything with the wood that is being stored. And what we um, we found out about it from a Zoom meeting um, and we discussed it in great detail. And we decide it is not feasible for us to even make anything with the wood because delivering wood from A to B, storing, then having somebody come up with a creation and making it um, painting it, sealing it, or whatever it needs to be done. So we are not taking on that project of the wood, the wood. Um, I believe, um, as I said, we're still working on our capital fund drive. We're only two months into it, and I think we're doing quite well so far. And we will be hopefully getting more funds. I think right now that is it till I come to the fireworks later.
Dan, maybe you could answer this and, 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 and maybe not, but from, from what you're looking at right now in terms of the Jubilee, um, do you have a sense of what it's gonna cost you to put it on? I mean, even a, a rough wall, I, I, I'm just curious. I mean, we are we looking, at, it's, it's wonderful that you've raised, you know, 34, you know, and, and it's going up. How, how does it sort out though, relative to what you anticipate the costs? We, or is it possible? We do not have all of our costs yet, so I'd rather not even project that because we're still working with, um, first we're looking for donations as much as we can, as we have some already. Um, and we're still working on the rental of everything from the tent to the dishes. Um, luckily, we have a lot of the linen is donated. So, so far, all we need is the tablecloths, which is hard to project how many we're going to get. And the average rental for a tablecloth is in the rough area around 10 to $12 per tablecloth. So it's hard to say that it's going to cost us X amount of dollars at this point. I mean, I mean, we we do have the seven O's, seven O's, the band. Is it seven O's? No, the old tones. Excuse me, old tones. Seven O's is Sunderland. We have the old tone band that's coming in, and that's a local Northampton band. We did look for somebody in South Deerfield for a band, but there was nobody available or that we felt was able to even play for us at that time. At this um, Jubilee, we're planning on having theme baskets for sale. Um, so we are going to try to raise money. We are going to have the cash bar, which we're dealing with uh, the the through the caterer, which recommends that we go through a, a liquor store in Amherst on University on, on, on Route 9. So we're going with them. We will be getting like 10% off if we go with that company. So we are trying to skimp and save as much as we can so that we really do not go in a hole on this function. And as you know, my name is on all of the, my name and phone numbers on just about all the flyers. I have received numerous calls. Most people are very happy to hear that it's a black and white informal function. Um, and they think that it's just super great because one says she can wear a gown and somebody else said they can just wear a white shirt with black pants and be casual. So that has gone over as a big hit. The, um, so it's keeping with the theme and it's not having to wear the tuxedo and or the gown as a formal black and white. I think that's a, basically it until we go to the fireworks later. Um, Stan, I just had a quick question on um, how many table. I mean, how many tickets are available? You said you've sold seven tables, um, so that's um, you know. What... Well, we sold seven tables, but we did some sell some individual ones. Like somebody bought five, and somebody bought four, and there's different amounts. Um, we have roughly figured we can have. With the, because of the of the band, and we're trying to work with Deerfield so that we can have the, the stage move to the North Circle where they're setting it up on the South Circle for their Christmas holiday function. Um, so we're gonna see if they can move it over for us, which I, I they were 99% sure they would, but it's gonna wait and see what happens. Um, we figured they could be, we're hoping to get, we can fit in very nicely 350 people, 300 to 350 people, and not have you crowded as eight at a table. That's wonderful. Thank you. Okay. Stan, I had two questions. 
Um, you talked at length about the MC for the Jubilee, um, but you didn't share the name. Beth Karish. Come to the function and find out. <laughs> no, that's being why. I'm sorry. That, no, that's uncalled for. It is a, her name is Beth Karish. Okay, I, that's who I thought it was, but you didn't say. Um, and my second question was. Um, I believe that's one of Diane Martin's relatives. Um, also. Okay. Awesome. Yep. I'm very familiar with her. She does a great job. Um, and my second question, only because um, I know it's different than what was originally proposed, having a buffet versus a sit-down dinner. And I'm not opposed to that, but will it all be served versus people serving themselves? It is a buffet. I know, but will there be servers serving the buffet or will people be serving themselves? Oh, I'm sorry. Um, no, there will be servers serving you. You're okay. Right. Okay. The menu is online. You know, right. there's yep. steak and, and, and there's um, for you ethnic Polish people, there's pierogies, some kind of pierogi, and there's, um, um, well, it's online and there's chicken and there's a vegetarian meal. There will be past um, hors d'oeuvres when you first walk in with a station of hors d'oeuvres. Can I ask a question, Stan? Sure. Um, I when I start, I came into the meeting, the steering committee. I, I it was already ongoing, and I, they were talking about some wood the tree that was taken down. And every time I expressed interest in doing something with that, Jennifer Remillard inferred that it was something that she was going to be taking care of. And as part of the steering committee, uh, that was not my responsibility. It was more of a fundraiser. Uh, she had a lot of plans for it. What happened to them? That the wood is no longer being considered. It is not feasible for us to even think about a, Diane, it's going to cost us so much money to take it from Deerfield to South Deerfield. Then we have to charge, they're going to charge us to plane it or cut it up. I'm not familiar with what they do with that in. Plane then it right from there, we I'm have so to good. go and get somebody to produce a product. Then we have to go and have somebody finish the product. Then we have to, after that, then we have to find the storage. No one on our committee has storage and we have to rent a storage. And the price that we figured out everything, we, we would be losing money so it's not feasible and we are not doing it. Okay. All righty. I wonder if there's we, a way we, we could get the high that. schools involved with this. Something the high school could help do it and have a uh, you know, basically what we were looking for was at the at the least would be charcuterie boards or or cutting boards. Uh, she Jennifer had inferred that it was going to be somebody in town, which to me seemed to be a rather expensive option. I, I don't know what Jennifer has agreed in your meetings, but I know when we discussed this in great detail yeah. at our friends' meeting, and 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 it was analyzed. The, uh, we estimated cost storage, producing the product, marketing the product. It's nothing that we want to take on. It, it will be losing our shirt on it. Okay, all righty. I believe, I don't know, but I thought Kevin Scarborough, is that his name? Knew yes. this also some time ago. Um, I think Kevin's willing to have the highway department take it somewhere. It's still up in um, Lamore Lumber. I, Diane, I, the public high school, Frontier doesn't have any ability to do anything, but maybe Franklin Tech, if For you- somebody, I mean, it would- I mean, if you, I feel comfortable item. as a committee, I would make a motion that, you know, if Diane can figure out what to do with the wood, then, you know, certainly the wood can go to her whatever you had in mind. 
uh, you know, if you want to pursue it, that's fine. I, I may try to, I may try to, because it seems, you know, it's a simple I, I, idea, you know, basically and, and well, the kids, playing the it kids, louder. Yeah, the kids may be able to um, do cutting boards or something. Yeah. yeah. I, I do know at the Franklin Tech, um, it sometimes takes a whole year before they will even take on another project. You have to get on the waiting list, which also reminds me, I forgot to mention, um, the Friends of Deerfield would like to donate to the town of Deerfield an 18 by 18 by 18 um, as a gift to the town, a time capsule. And what our question to your committee, this committee is, is that going to be big enough for items that you feel that is going inside this time capsule? We would also, we would also make a stone. I, we do not know a location if, if, where it would be planted, um, but we would make a, 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 we'd have a, like a little, like a bronze type, or concrete, whatever, some kind of a stone in the ground so that in the next generation, next celebration, it could be dug up and these items can be produced, you know, shown. And I do know there are some people that already have, when some of the committee members have already said that they would be giving things like, I'm going to be giving that thousand dollar book of, of subs, uh, Sugarloaf Street and things like that. But um, I don't know the size. If you think that eighteen by eighteen, and that would be made by um, Franklin County Tech. So you talking to Bob Decker? We we spoke to Mr. Decker. Yes. Yeah, because he was he came to me and suggested that uh, he could probably arrange something in terms of a time capsule. Well, there is a cost, but we would. Friends of Deerfield would would cover that and give it as a gift to the town to bury with a marker. Nice. Wonderful. I I don't know if it's big enough. It seems like it's pretty big, but an 18 by 18 fills up pretty fast. Yes, I don't know if you have anything special that you want to put in to it. I don't know if there's like frontier. I don't know. I'm not a native, so I don't know what they have done here in the past, you know, for tidbits or but, even if it was a town report or something. Yeah, and, and as a minimum, I think our our pictorial postmarks, you know, should go in there because that that's a keepsake from this year of celebration. Right. And we'll have other things, I'm sure that will become kind of precious to this celebration time. Yeah, well, that is something that, you know, we, we would need to know within a reasonable amount of time if you feel that is large enough so that Franklin County can make it and we can, you know, start filling it up with special things. My only suggestion might be to make one of those, well, make it like 24 long by 18 wide. There may be some bigger items that will stretch out that far. So rather than bend them up or whatever. So you like 24 by 18 by 18? Yeah. I mean, we don't want to bury a coffin. You know, that's, a, that's a little too big, but uh, you know, something I'm I'm sure we'll come up with something to, to put in there, and um, that's a, that's a nice uh, that's a nice gift. That is a wonderful yes, gift. Thank I, you. I thank think you what we much. should do is all of us think of as we're going along here what what should go into that time camp capsule. Um, Holly mentioned the post. Um, you know, the postmarks, that's that, mm -hmm. obviously, um, but anything else that we're producing as a group for the 350th, I think would be awfully nice. And, um, you know, we need to have some pictures or something too. 
right how you know does anyone know what Northfield or some or Hatfield or what some of the other communities have put into their time capsule? Because all of them have done it. Did um, Holly? Do you you do you know John Hannum enough to just give him a call and ask what's in their time capsule? I'm um, sure I can ask. I'll call Ed Lesko in Hatfield. I can ask. Out. I can ask um, Sunderland too. Oh, thank you, Holly. Yeah, I'll call it Let's Go in Hatfield and see what they put in their time capsule, just so we get a kind of an idea of what kind of things tend to be. Plus, I'll give you an idea of the size. You know, yeah. maybe yeah. 24 is too big. Maybe 18 would be perfect, or maybe 30. I mean, I don't know, you know. Yeah, I think so. For how, Peter, how about an agenda item for next month is, yeah. um, you know, items for the time capsule. We can just sort of do a little yep. research. Kelly, you can put that on your, your agenda. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> I'm glad you brought that up, Stan, because um, actually I hadn't thought about it at all. Um, so yeah. that, was, that was a good idea. Okay. So where we left the wood is just Kevin, we, we kind of passed it off to Kevin and said, okay, you take care of it. Well, it's it's up at Lamar Lumber and I believe it's just stored. Um, you know, we tracked it down. And and I remember because uh, Bill Lamar, I tracked him down in Florida to ask him about the wood. And he said that he, he himself was not able to cut the wide, um, there was only a couple people. The, there was a sawmill in Conway and maybe Stan, you, you're the one you're referring to in South Deerfield um, that can cut the you know big wide wood. I think Bill said he can only go up to 20 inches. And, um, and I, I don't know, otherwise it was just up there. I don't remember, oh, it was, what was it Red Oak? versus white oak. It was either one or the other. We thought it was white oak and it's red oak, or if it was, we thought it was red oak and it's really white I oak. I think it was red oak and red oak does not make a nice finished product as the white oak. Okay, so that then that is correct, Stan, because yeah. Bill wanted to make it clear that, you know, working with a lesser quality of wood. Right. You know, from his viewpoint. So mm -hmm. it doesn't mean that people aren't interested. It's just, it doesn't have as nice a quality as the white oak. Thank right. you for bringing that, Dan. Okay, uh, how about an update on the fireworks, Carolyn? Um, I don't really have an update other than to say that, um, uh, you know, we would, to lock in, that was one of the basis for um, asking for the thirty thousand dollars is so that we had plenty of money um, to commit, you know, to write a check to make sure that the um, fireworks would happen in June, because okay. if we waited till April, then um, that would be not money wouldn't be available till July first. So we again, I, I went to the finance committee basing the thirty thousand dollar request is just a timing. And a safety net issue. I have no I no qualms that um, the friends of Deerfield are going to do an excellent job, um, and we have probably won't even use the money. But if there was some issues because of the situation with the uh, jubilee, it was supposed to be a real money maker, and because not everything was going to be the same situation that happened for the three hundred. Um, it was going to be less, more of a break even event. So um, that was why. And uh, people were very understanding of that. I didn't, I didn't, I mean, there were some questions, but, you know, it, it's just a timing issue in my, in my mind. Okay, did, the so finance, did, did the finance committee approve the 30,000? Yes, they did. Okay. Good. I was just going to speak to it. 
um, at town meeting floor at, in that manner. Just is a timing issue. It's a safety net for um, to make sure that our events that need to be locked in for the parade, need to be locked in for fireworks, need to be locked in for, you know, commitment, like your post activities, post parade activities, that all people are gonna, you know, want to deposit at least. So it's just not, I'm not saying that Friends of Deerfield are not gonna be successful because I'm sure they are, just like it had, you know, donations were raised in other towns for this collaboration. So on the fireworks, we are working with a professional woman who is looking at different companies to get us the best deal. And Chris Harris is looking at looking for sponsors to help us pay for these fireworks. Not saying we've got it, but we're looking at different options like that. Um, we. Um, I went to the Sunderland fireworks and I believe some of the other people went. We were very disappointed. They were very small. They, they didn't even last for five, 10 minutes. And if we do fireworks someplace in town, we want something nice. Are, are you talking about the Sunderland anniversary fireworks? The ones that there was at the, at the, the fireworks that they had over at the, by the um, library. Those those fireworks lasted almost a half an hour and they were some of the best I've ever seen. Well, that's a, well I'm sure they were. And they, they used the same company that Waitley used and Waitley's got incredibly good reviews. Okay, um, we, are, we are looking, we have a professional woman looking at it and we're having Mr. Harris is also looking at this, we, we want something really spectacular someplace. We're also looking, we're also thinking about possibly Deerfield Academy because that is the same weekend that their anniversary, I mean, their alumni are in town. And I don't, we are not sure if they have fireworks that day. So maybe we could, coordinate and have everything on the same evening. But that's just, we are not sure on that quite yet because we need to check with the alumni office. Okay, I think we need to really coordinate, Stan, because if we're looking at post parade music and food trucks, it makes sense to have everything in the same neighborhood. And we well, were looking- Oh, Deerfield is our neighborhood too. I'm talking about the same neighborhood being the same neighborhood for all the events. The so, walks through. so if the parade breaks out and, and finishes up around Frontier and everybody is in the South Deerfield area, that's going to spill over to music and food trucks, nobody is going to want to get in a car to drive north to watch fireworks when the music is ongoing. So I think we, we uh, really need to coordinate. Well, it, that's, I guess this is a, a project that the Friends of Deerfield is looking at. So we will, we are looking into it and then we will get back to you, your committee on yeah. the fireworks. Yeah. We must work together and unite and if Deerfield Academy is going to have them the same night, and we're going to have them the same night. I'm not saying Deerfield is, because we do not know. It's something we're looking into. Um, wh what's the date of our what's the date of our um, parade off the top of our head? What June? What day in June? Tenth. Tenth. Oh, that might be actually that might that be. That is Deerfield, <laughs> yes, because Mr. Harris is going to his. I forgot what number he said he's going to 40th or something. I don't remember what, what is, I, maybe not 40th. I don't recall what, what anniversary he's having. And I did, Stan, I don't think it was to, uh, to decide one town over the other, but I think the original intention when they were talking about it was to have it as the parade wound down. Since the people would already be there, they would keep, keep thinking of events to keep them there to the fireworks. So I think that's why 
the it was assumed South Deerfield would be the venue for the fireworks. Yes. All along, since that's where all well, the, we're, all we're, the as traffic I said, people would be. As I said, we are looking into this and we will come back once we find out any final plans. Maybe Deerfield is not going to have them. So maybe that is an option. Maybe not. Maybe it is. I don't know. I can't say. But we must work together with Deerfield, oh Deerfield, and this committee, our committees. Uniformity is very important in our lives today. Do you have a time frame when you'll have a few more details on that? Because I think that's going to be imperative for some of the things that we're trying to put together. I do not have a time period when this, when we will even coordinate everything. Our, 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 our sponsors are still looking and it sometimes it takes time. But are you thinking a couple of weeks or a no, couple I'm of months? No, I'm thinking a couple of months at least. Uh, that's that's going to be hard. We're trying to line up bands. We're trying to line up a venue. We'll let you, Holly, I'm sorry, but we'll let you know as soon as we can. We're working the best we can. We're trying to raise money. We're trying to get this Jubilee going. And we have... There are so many other options that we're trying to do to raise more money and we're doing the best we can and we, we have to all work together, which is a key for success. We want this to be the best, you know, 350th that any town has ever had. I agree. So I can't say it's gonna be a week, a month, three months or what? It's just, we don't know. Um, Stan, uh, Holly had mentioned that, it, what was the name of that fireworks company? Is it Southern, Maine? Southern Maine, she said Southern, Southern Maine. Maine. Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, just, um, we just wanna make sure that uh, they're being considered because they, they have delivered in our area off season, which is one of the things. We you know, did give that to the person that we are coordinating these with also, yes. So thanks, yep. And, and there, we're looking and, for the and, best deal that we can possibly have and have a really spectacular um, show of fireworks. And I know we cannot use the, um, we probably can't use the um, Shuttle of Mountain because come June, that's like May and when the, when, when a lot of the young wildlife has their young life just starting off and, and it may not work there. We do have, we do have the property of the park and we do have, you know, frontier property that we would have to ask the frontier school, but we could do it off, you know, it's- Yeah, school, yeah like, school like I said, we're- we do it behind the, town hall or behind the elementary school i mean there's there's several places in downtown south Deerfield. Yeah. i feel like we yeah. could. we're gonna do the best we can to house host them here in in this village but we're we're also working with other people also you know to make sure they're successful sounds really good hey stan one of the things i don't know if you've uh, talked to the folks at uh treehouse but one of the owners is really into fireworks <laughs> actually they may they might be willing to sponsor it and have it at their place that's, that's also nice a option. really good idea oh we've, we've tried treehouse three times already but we really haven't got any response from them hmm. Hmm. is there a name he could follow up with peter I'd have to I'd have to look it up. I had a meeting with him one day, this probably six months ago, but that was one of the things he kind of let drop that he really liked fireworks and was planning to do some himself. Yeah. Dan, why don't you um who's who's in why don't you have whoever is doing the fireworks stuff give me a buzz and, and I'll see if we can sort something maybe out with Treehouse or something. Okay. All right. Rocky. Hey, Rocky. Can I say something? Of course. Um, the I was just thinking if we end up having the fireworks, 
up in old Deerfield or something like that. Uh, what about uh, like some people that don't drive? How would they get up there? Uh, would they be do? Would you be doing shuttles and things like that? Hmm. Yeah, that's a. I don't. That would be I'll, a bit much. Yeah, I, I, I think, so. I, I, think um, we would, I think we better try it down. We'll keep it down in South Deerfield or something. Yeah, well, I'm, 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 I was just throwing that out there, just in okay. case. Yeah, like I said, we're going to do the best we can, but I can't guarantee a location at this day and time. We'll get, maybe get FCAT involved to take films of it so it can be posted uh, on TV for people to view. Yeah, that's another option also. Well, there's nothing like live fireworks, though. Oh, I mean, how, how many people yeah. like to watch them on TV? I mean, yeah. yeah. But no, as an option, because I don't think a shuttle is a, a, a really a viable idea. No. I think we also I think have to remember that. that we have like, we have farmers in the area with their cows. And when a fireworks go off, I was told by um, Ms. Melnick when she was on the committee, they produce less milk, animals hate fireworks, dogs especially. I'm not a favor of fireworks, so I'm not really involved in the fireworks, <laughs> but other people are, so I have never gone to fireworks since I was a kid. <laughs> I saw them Sunderland from my house because they were just flying over my house, basically up in the air. Following up on Rocky's suggestion about uh, transportation, maybe one of the things in terms of talking to Deerfield is maybe they'd like to ship their parents down here to watch our fireworks. Yeah. And bust them down or have them just drive down. It's, it's not that. parents, it's alumni. Well, even better. But remember, I'm not saying that Deerfield is going to have them. Right. They, have in, the, they have in the past. And, uh, and that's the same it. day, same weekend, same night. Yeah. So, but I, I'm not sure if they would get a permit from the fire district if we were doing ours that night. So I let's not let's not generate. But isn't their fire department the old Deerfield and we're south? Yes. Are they not two separate fire districts? Yes. Okay. It is my fire district. So we'll find out okay. and sort it out. Okay. Good. Right. Well, so fireworks is something that somebody else is dealing with and we're going to do the best we can to please everybody the best we can yep and let's not generate problems right we sort it out it's evolving uh, right but hey. I, I am that is my fire district so i will go to a fire district meeting if uh, i have to Do we have any? Do we have any additional? Uh, we've got post post parade budget. Is there anything over and above what we've already discussed that needs to go in there? Uh, we've got the estimate, Holly. You gave us a a, a nice rundown for, from Sue's uh, estimates of at least some of what we would need for that interim. Um. Yeah. I. It's. Um. Obviously, it's just whether or not we get approval and now I'm a little tentative because we really kind of have to have an idea what we're doing collectively for the post parade. And if the fireworks are post parade and the location's an issue for us to move forward and give Sue some direction of what's getting approved, she needs to know where things would be set up so she can know the logistics of power for bands and where, you know, a flatbed could be, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, the one item is the budget and whether or not in our crystal ball of what we have and what we're asking additional for, if we can set aside money for these post parade events. Um, my suggestion would be that we see what, if town meeting will support um, our additional funding request. 
And then um, whoever is working on this fireworks, if Stan, if you could get them to reach out to me, we can sort out that. And then um, I, I would say that within a two or three weeks, I will find out and give Susie direction so that she knows that she has a budget and that, um, you know, more solid on that. Well, we but I, I think collectively we have to decide where we're going to have these things because now, you know, we're looking at food trucks and looking at another maybe subcommittee to try to line some of those up. I mean, there was a question of can we close some streets down um, just in the village if we were going to do it in the village so it would be a little safer for people to walk around. So. You know, I think we have a few widgets here. And now after this meeting, we're not going to meet this group for six weeks. And well, for hiring music, um, starting to work with things, we're getting closer to some deadlines to do that. Um, are we able to proceed the post parade uh, the food trucks, the music, uh, the, whether or not there's fireworks at night, does it have, if, you know, the, there could still be an after parade party, whether or not there's a, uh, a the uh, culmination of fireworks. It's, it's not about if we have place. fireworks, it's about where the fireworks. Where the fireworks are. are. You know, wanting a continuation of an event in somewhat proximate proximity of each other, if they're yes, not. Definitely. But remember, as I said, we're going to work with you the best we can. We may have them in South Deerfield for all we know. We don't know right now. We're still working on our end. We, we have some other pressing issues that we must finish up, finish up with our, our Jubilee. And our campaign is very important to us right now. And then whatever we decide, we as friends decide as a whole group it's not just my decision or one person's we we vote everything but we're going to do the best we can I, I i just want to throw this out and this is just a crazy thought i mean do we reassume the fireworks under this committee so that we can coordinate everything and then we can have a little better management of how we, you know, go forward on these events. I don't, I don't know. I'm concerned Holly, about I, this. Holly, I, I'll just work with whoever's handling the fireworks and then we'll get this sorted out within a couple weeks. And yeah. I don't All right. move forward. I, I, okay. As I long as we can, this. you know, a couple weeks is okay. Um, you know, a couple months, not so good. I know. I, I I I think we can sort this out. Okay. So, do we want to just table this budget conversation until we next meet, or is there any way we can stay contingent on town meeting? We could approve a certain amount. Well, I think if you get it approved at town meeting, it's a done deal. Then you, you just it's a question of Holly, the, what you the, want to allocate it for. Right. Within, if the town meeting approves it, then the money is just shifted from free cash because this is coming from free cash. It, it will just shift into our account. So it's okay. available. Okay. But Stu said she's going to need to have a guarantee of money before she can start to even solicit music. Well, if she needs, I mean, I'm, I'm, would make a motion that we support a budget of six thousand dollars for Sue to do post. Um, I think she was eight. She was looking for eight because she's looking oh, for six for music and two oh, for okay. kids stuff. Yeah. All right. I then I would make a total of eight. I was thinking just of you know committing for the music, but I'm I'm fine to do the whole thing. So I would make amend my well, motion. If I mean, if it, if it makes more sense to just commit to the music right now, and then we could commit further. But I think what she wanted to do is start making some phone calls because things get 
you know, tied yeah. up and just trying to get some wheels in motion. Well, yeah, and I would, and I, so I would make the motions to the entire eight. I know you have to commit to those bouncy house things too. Yeah. Yep. I hear a second on the motion. I'll second. second. So we will commit up to $10,000 for the post parade events contingent upon allocation of funds from the town. Yep. I'm making notes here, sorry. That's okay. So the steering committee votes to commit 10,000, up to $10,000 for post parade event contingent upon town appropriation. That's the, that's the motion. All those in favor? Hi, Diane. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Kelly and Jay are saying yes to, I can see that. Yeah, looks like we got it. Okay. Um, last item on the agenda is um, logo protection and usage. Mm -hmm. Carolyn, do you have any sense from the town's perspective what what people's feeling is about this or have, have you talked it with the select board at all or well, we're fine if what whatever anyone what however we feel that is good use as a steering committee then they're fine with no the the logo is very simple so you know it can't be conscrewed you know it can't be morphed into too many offensive things the most important thing it just can't be used offensively. Oh, please, that's all. I mean, that's our only concern. Golly. Um, in October, we authorized fifty dollars to protect our logo, and Jen Remillard was doing something with the state to do that. I, I think she filed a copyright or something. Uh, I think so, that's what it was. If my memory it was some kind of. I don't know, paperwork thing. Yes. Would it have so, to do with the logo or was it having to do with the web page? It had to do with the logo. No, it was the logo. That was the first money that we spent, I think, because that came out of the that actually came out of the it was it was the logo. That's okay. what my notes are. We had a town, it was one of the first expenses. Um because the town, 360th, the only people that had donated, I think, to it was Stan and I. And so she used part of our money, I think, that we had donated. It, town money hadn't hit it yet until July 1st. And she actually sent it in before July 1st. So if we yeah. file yeah. to protect it, then people can't use it for profit, correct? Without permission. With permission, you can With use permission. it. With permission. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And and the selectmen, as long as it's not offensive, this they're fine with the steering committee decision. They don't need that. Not everything needs to be approved by the select board. They're just at, you know Tim and Trevor and I all feel just as long as it's not offensive. Please. How, how can we get clarification? Should we get clarification from Jen as to whether she ever got anything back, or how did that? I mean, if she filed something, then I would expect something to come back. Yeah. Uh, Let me tell you about the logo. Exclusive okay. rights by the designer and the designer's family, and we have it in writing, was given exclusively to the Friends of Deerfield. The Friends of Deerfield owns that logo. And we have documentation, and if you need it, Peter, we can send it to you. 
That's not my understanding because Julie gave it to me to be used by the steering committee. Right. It is not. It's, we, yeah. have, we have documentations from the I designer, which I, we will have sent to you, Peter. And we need to then we need to clarify it with the signer. We I, don't know how that, I don't know how that came about because that's the first time I heard of it, Sam. We've known about it for some time now. Well, I mean, during steering. during our steering committee, um, October 25th of 21, we have we were doing a $50 expense to protect our logo in Massachusetts. And that is our logo on our web pages, on our sites. Um, and that is not owned by Friends of Deerfield. We will send, Peter, we will send you the paperwork. I'm, I'm gonna to talk to the person who signed the paperwork to find out what's going on because we were given that. I send you the paperwork yeah. for us, and then you can talk to the the designer. I'm sure it's just miscommunication. It's, it's uh, because we had it, we paid for it from the steering committee. So let's we'll, we'll just see the paperwork, and it will get sorted out. No, okay. Let us do that. We'll send you the paperwork, and you can figure it out. Okay. I'm I'm sure it's um, whatever. I don't think that was the paperwork, but it it's fine. So let's so I, I, I think if anybody uses the logo um or wants to use it, um then we would want to see their artwork before they do anything so that we can make sure they're not using it in any way we don't want them to. Right. I, I, I don't like I said, I think it just needs to be looked at by us or whoever is going to use the product to our friends of Deerfield has the same, you know, because Tim, I know Tim is involved in that. So he feels the same way. It's just as long as it's not offensive to anyone. That's all. all so right, we had that, the discussion. Didn't we have a person, um, Kelly, reach out to you? So are they looking to do something with our logo? Yes, they want to carve it into wood and then sell those items. For personal profit or? They're, they're giving me the information piecemeal. Uh, so it would require yet another email to find out what their intentions are. Uh, but I'd rather wait because this conversation sounds a little bit more. Yeah. In depth okay. before I even go back to them. Yeah. Okay. I didn't know if you owed somebody a quick message. So well, okay. I kind of do, but I don't have an answer. I don't think so. Yeah, maybe you could just tell him it's still pending. And he's that, I mean that's how wait. I left it before. I said it's okay being reviewed okay. by committee. And, okay. and Kelly, let's see if maybe that we can get that person to coordinate to do some cutting boards or something. <laughs> you know? I mean, what <laughs> is what? <laughs> you know. <laughs> Give them the logo and say, yeah, if you want to mass produce, we'll get a group of people to mass produce cutting boards and other items made out of wood with a stamp on them. You never know. I don't think red oak is something that you'd use as a cutting board. You would not. It is. It's red oak specifically. Okay. I'll have to look into that one. It's red oak. Okay. Okay. Um, Next item. I think we're through with the agenda. It's nine. It's eight fourteen. Take a motion to adjourn. Second it. <laughs> that was pretty fast. <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> I still have jet lag. <laughs> Diane made the motion and 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 um, Holly seconded. Did you get that, Peter? Yep. Okay. All those in favor? Aye, Holly. Aye, Diane. Everybody said. Got all the way around. Everybody's got hands. All right. Okay, and uh, let me just double double check. The next meeting is November twenty eighth. Is that what we scheduled? Um. Well. You know, maybe we should 
Yes, I have it on my calendar for the 28th, but maybe we should do um, November 14th, just because we're, you know, getting close to the, a lot of action here to start the year. Holly and um, I can't do the 14th. Oh. We can't do the 14th unless we do it. Yeah, we're going to the um, South Deerfield Water District meeting that night. Oh, okay. Um, do you want to do it the 7th? Um, we have a parade work group. Oh, okay. Well, if if we if there's any huge problems that come up or anything come up, we don't have to have a Monday. We we just have to take 48 hours to post a meeting. So okay. if some of these issues morph into more more problems, then let's you know let's call a meeting before the 28th because I'm um, a little nervous to let it go. Like, like Holly said, for so, so long, six mm -hmm. weeks. If we get information from all these different sources, we can always put them on an email and have um, an email well, conversation. Well, what we can do is we can send it to Alex, okay? And Alex will send it to each of us. So then, therefore, it's not an open meeting violation. Yeah, okay. yeah. Oh, and if we okay. have any inaction, you know, because we don't have that work around somewhere. <laughs> we don't have any we don't have any clerical help otherwise so if you have comments you comment back to alex and alex will forward everything to peter to put on the agenda the next okay. time okay maybe we can hash out a few of these things and prior to a meeting right. just retorting to each other and is, uh, is there a so. is there a date we could maybe pick as a tentative in case we need to meet sooner because um, we're all here together right now. Okay. Like um, the week, the week of the seventh. Um, right now, I could do the ninth or tenth. I have meetings both those nights, but I have the eighth available. Is is that's a Tuesday? Um, the eighth. How about um, will you guys meet on a Friday? Or Friday, I have. Well, no, you can't meet no, on Friday the eleventh because it's a Veterans Day. And I, I won't meet on the Friday unless we meet during the day. Eighth is Election Day. Yeah, I was gonna say that's. Carly is oh, not yeah. gonna want that. Sorry, Alex. Yeah, I forgot about that. Oh, geez. Well, then um, we're into the next week. But, I mean, I don't have to be there. I just uh, have a. I have a six thirty on the ninth, and I have a seven. Okay. Ten. So how about the 15th or the 16th? Um, I or the 17th. Uh, the, the I actually have a meeting every night that week. <laughs> um, I that's my quarter that's SCEMS meeting and Selectman's meeting and senior housing meeting. So we're back to Friday or Monday. Um well could could we meet a late afternoon? To, yeah, well, we don't have to have me. Um, why don't why don't we pick? Well, but you're the one who's going to be bringing some information back, so we do need you. <laughs> um. Well, if we if we meet six o'clock on the seventeenth, as a tentative, I don't I don't have a meeting till seven. My senior housing meeting isn't until seven. So I could do six o'clock, six to seven. That should be enough for, um, you know, like fireworks, single issue kind of ish stuff. How, how does that look for anybody else? Well, was what day was that again? Got, that's, that's Thursday. Booked up. Um, are they, the, hist the historical commission is meeting that night at six o'clock and I'm supposed to work with them to see if we can do something. Well, we could do it the week before. We could do it six o'clock on the 10th. Because I, I have a, I have a senior housing meeting every Thursday. That one works better for me. The tenth. Okay. Okay. If, so eleven ten at six o'clock. Yes, if necessary. We all we need to do to post it. It just has to be posted by my, uh, by Tuesday at four o'clock. And what we could do is make it a short meeting if we only have a handful of more important things, and then still meet on the twenty eighth. Yes, sounds good. Yeah, an abridged agenda and uh, just 
Yeah, just kind of do the, the, the big stuff. None of the big updates, you know, just the important things we maybe have to do some decision points on. That's fine. Well, what if, if, if we're going to be feeding our stuff into Alex, why don't um, somewhere around the uh, end of the week before that, let's see what's come in, see what information has come in. Then I can send out a tentative agenda for these would be the items that we want to talk about on the on the 10th. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah. Works yeah. Okay. Alex can post it on the 8th. It, he just has to get it to the town clerk by okay. 4 p.m. So on the 8th. So if we, Peter, if you decide Thursday the 3rd, you, you're going to look at material and you'll, you, you can decide whether we're going to have a meeting or not. Okay. And you can just yep. let Alex know. And then I will give him a heads up that we will be posting an agenda. All right. Just, yeah, the, just remember. The, the better. Just election is going to be complicated. Yeah. yeah. And it's okay with your schedule too, Alex? Uh, oh, yeah. Meeting um, on the Chris, uh, Chris, no, I think the new assistant town administrator will be starting a few days before that. So um, maybe it won't be me. Um, I think it will because he won't. It'll take a little while to get used to this stuff. That's true. <laughs> I think Alex, don't don't jump ship yet. Oh no 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 no! I'm I'm along <laughs> for the ride. I'm happy to come. Uh, uh, we we need to get caught up. The problem is so much stuff is happening that there's just meetings all over the place. It's really hard to get extra out of our schedule, but we'll do it, and um, hopefully we'll get sorted out on the fireworks. Okay, everybody. Um, yep. Okay. I have faith in my fire district. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. Again, all right. Thanks. Thank you, everybody. Thank you all. Bye-bye. Thank you.